Um, what I'd like to do is the final factor. Now in the next segment that we're going to do is we're going to really work on this final segment, okay, this last third part. But before we do that, I wanted to talk to you about affect and the two factors we've covered so far. All right. So as I mentioned when I was a child, it's like a clown. And of course we know it's dissonant now and it's going at eight hertz. But it's also at the same time very different than this, which is also a second, but it's one that's a half step smaller. So this is two semitones, and I'm going to call it a two. This is one, and they have vastly different characteristics, okay? So what I would observe is that I'm going to just ask you to do this physically, and then I'm going to explain it more after the break. But uh, what I would ask you to do is to notice that you will actually feel, any when I play the two, which is a major second, you will feel as if it's almost like the two pitches are like two magnets of like polarity. They're pushing apart. So let me show you what I mean. By the way, it's going to be true of the perfect fifth, the major third, the major sixth. So lots of different ones. You learn it here. You got it everywhere. So this is going to be my two. So when you hear it, it feels vast. And that's why we can get so confused. It can be difficult sometimes to sing down a major second. You might have noticed that sometimes. And it will feel like it's a world away, but it's mostly because it's a harmonic dichord, okay? So in other words, the two pitches are repelling one another so that it can sound much larger. By contrast, this is 11. That is a major seventh. This can actually sound very small versus this. So this is two semitones, two, 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 11. So this is why we can, when we're really listening, become confused because this factor actually relates not to the relative pitch distance, but to the overtone series of the bottom note. And I'll go into more in just a moment, but I want to ask you to try this. Now, real important, if you feel like, oh, I didn't quite get that, the idea is don't worry about that because we're going to give plenty of opportunity for you to go deeper into it and it will become easier and easier. So whatever you do, don't worry about it. It's great and helpful if you'll answer, even if you don't really know what, whether you can do it. it, even if it's wrong. And I want to ask you to do that because that's just feedback for me and for all of us. That's very helpful. And I would thank you for that. Um, I'm going to ask you to tell me whether I'm playing a two or a one. A one, the upper note is not in the overtone series of the bottom note. And it will feel like two magnets of opposite polarity going like that. So I liken it to the flavor of acid. Okay, <laughs> but lemon, let's be nice. Lemon, okay, or pineapple. It's pungent, it's intense, and I say acidic. Um, it also has this feeling of, as I mentioned, contracting, which is very important. The two pitches want to contract and merge into one another, okay? Whereas the two, wow, the opposite. It's much more like alkaline flavors. That is to say, it would be much more like mashed potatoes very creamy. <laughs> Sorry if somebody doesn't like mashed potatoes. <laughs> okay, so very fresh milk or cream or, or a cheese that's very mild. So it's very bland or rice. Rices are good ones. So versus this. So the harmonic ones, the upper note is in the overtone series and that's what the two is. So the two feels like it's harmonious with the bottom note and it will feel as if it's expanding. So oddly enough, you can use your hand. So, and really pitching, pinching it together. One, like one, one, two, two, try it. Two, 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 yeah, nice and loud, thank you. Good, good. Okay, good. Now we're going to do a three and a four. Okay, and a three just means three semitones away and four, and it's modal. Okay, but they're going to have the same basic properties. 
that the one and the two had, respectively. That is, do you notice with the three? Even though it's, the two pitches are far apart, it feels much more like they go together. Now you can only appreciate that. You know it's got four hertz. Modal, modal, now watch this. The four feels vast, and that's because the three, the upper note, if I play a C and I play an E flat, the E flat is not in the overtone series until high up. But E is the fifth partial, that is that it's a very low overtone, the fourth overtone uh, above C, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So ultimately, the four is gonna just sound like it's alkaline and open, whereas the three is gonna sound like it's gonna have that same acidic character so this, what I call harmonicity factor, is going to be another whole dimension that we're perceiving. So give it a whirl here. So this one is a, what do you think? What does your hand want to do? Right, so it's going to be a four, four, four semitones, four, four, three, really, three, three. Louder? Good, you knew. Three. Four. Good, relax. Four, excellent. Four. Four. Good, so let your hand, your ear do it. Now we'll keep going and practicing. That's harder, isn't it? The threes and the fours are a lot harder. Mm -hmm. And I believe the reason that that might be the case is because of the fact that our, the modal effect softens the non-harmonic. What I mean is this is lemon, straight out lemon on your tongue. This is sort of a, a lemon meringue pie, you know, sort of lemony, but not so lemony, okay? <laughs> but this, whoa, what is that? That's the four. That's I don't know what that is, maybe just the meringue on top of the lemon, I never thought of that. So it's just sort of bland versus, that's right. Good, let's do some more of those guys. So this one is a three, three. This is real important because your ear is telling you feedback. Three, good, got it, four. Good. Okay, so again, I'm like a chef when I'm making a piece of music. I'm, I'm tasting the ingredients in much the same way, and they have different expression. I'm going to continue my discussion of that, but I would like to finish with something that drives musicians crazy. Do any of you guys find it annoying to tell a fourth from a fifth? Have you ever had that problem? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's a common problem, certainly one I had um, before I understood a lot of this stuff. So. Uh, what I found was that, guess what? The fourth is gonna be this. The fifth is gonna be that, okay? So this is a hard thing to get used to, everybody. A fourth is five semitones. That's really hard to get, ugh. And I can see that if I go from C, one, two, three, four, five. A perfect fourth is five semitones. And then a fifth would be from C to G. It's two semitones larger. It's a seven. I like this, it actually works well. I'm kind of a numerology freak. And so a five is actually uh, the number of change and often war and, and uh, so it heralding. Can you imagine using that this way? To me, when that happens, I'm going, this guy does not know or she does not know what's going on here. Because to me, that doesn't sound like war. It's like, whoa, you know, what's gonna happen instead of like, that's what's gonna happen. Okay, so when you hear the five, it's gonna do that. The seven, it's gonna do that in a big way, all right? One of the reasons is the fourth, the upper note is closer to the lower note than the octave, a, okay? So it's closer to go from C to F than to go from F to C. That's called the inversion. It's a longer distance. And so the ear is gonna have that F that upper note pulling down, but on top of it, it's not in the overtone series. So on top of it, 
we have the two factors, the polarity wanting it to go down, but on top of it, we have this fact that it's non-harmonic, so acid, okay, that, that intense contracting of the two magnets of opposite polarity, okay? The seven, whoa, the upper note, the perfect fifth, C after G, is closer to this C than to this C. Therefore, it's really gonna feel like the upper note's looking up, but on top of it, it's in the overtone series. So it's gonna have that harmonic, open, um, alkaline quality. So here we go, five or seven, what do you guys think? Good, everybody? Good, five. Seven. Seven. Ooh, listen, really? Little too, mm. But I le leapt up a fifth, which is why that happened, okay? So this is a five, 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 five. Good, just trust your ear, seven. Seven, your body, seven. Louder. Seven. Excellent. Seven. Thank you. Seven. Five. Excellent. Five. Terrific. <laughs> awesome. So they have vastly different qualities, and this might be the reason then I thought that that was that warrior, or I was taught that, versus this, the monk. But they're both perfect, okay? So that's going to be a very important feature. We're going to do a couple more sets. This is a minor sixth. And we versus, okay. So the minor six is a half step larger, it's an eight. So it's modal, it's got that lovely modal quality, but boy, oh boy, it can feel much smaller than it is, which can make it interesting when I go to a sixth versus a third. So it feels small, and that's because it's clashing with an overtone, which we'll talk about. Your ear's hearing this. I'm not, now I won't play it after, I, I'll play it. I'm playing an overtone. Can you guys justify that I'm playing this overtone? <laughs> no, I'm not. It's almost the same. And it's pungent, it's acid, it's got all those same characteristics of two magnets contracting. That's going to be our eight. And now a nine. A nine is the major sixth, and it feels, not only is that upper note looking up, but on top of it, it's expansive, exactly. So here's my nine. So nine, nine, Loud. Excellent. <laughs> what do you guys think? Let, listen to your hand. Yes. Good. So I'm going to ask you to do something. What you're experiencing is when the interval gets larger, do you start noticing you're just listening to the top voice, which is why I could do this? Eight, nine, nine. It's because you're really hearing this more than you're hearing. Uh. Uh, uh. So what you have to do is, this is a trick that, again, great composers understand. Any interval over a fifth, or well, really a fourth, what happens is it bifurcates and it turns into a separate voice. It's like they, they split into two. And so that is something that Bach will use. So that he creates a sense of two different voices that are going on. Okay, so, and it's using those larger intervals. So just try to think of yourself as, think of the bottom note and put yourself between, okay? So these are, we go, what's this? What do you think? Lemon or mashed potatoes or potatoes? Yeah, everybody though. Eight, eight, good. Good, really pinch it. Eight, by the way, relax your hand to neutral, eight, afterward, good, eight. Good. Nine. I'm going to go fast. Nine. Nine. I know you get ahead of yourself. Okay, good. Good for you. Awesome. So, again, the idea is that you can really feel these almost like currents, but you have to stay extremely light. Do you notice that? If you're answering and you get heavy or you get ahead, it's problematic, but no problem. Just relax. I'm going to go really fast now. Eight or nine. Okay, so what I feel when, I, when I'm hearing them fast is I'm, I'm almost feeling like there's a, you know, this expanding, almost undertow versus like that. So, eight, eight, eight. Eight, eight, eight. 
good. Let it go. Louder. Nine, nine. <laughs> nine. Okay. So when uh, I now want to do the sevens, there's gonna, they're going to be easier than the six. Six are the hardest. Okay, those are the hardest, and we will be working on those because, believe it or not, in the next hour, we're going to be telling whether this is a first or a second inversion major chord at this speed based on that. Okay, you want to try something? What do you think? You're going to say eight, 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 nine, nine. Okay, so we'll be able to tell inversions of chords, and that's why that Mozart chord I talked about at the beginning is an eight on the outside. And so it's got that, you know, gripping and yet emotional at the same time quality. Now, finally, the sevenths. Okay, so the, the weird thing is that, did you notice that the ones that were pinchy were always the smallest in a pair? It was the one that was pinchy and the two that was the expansive one. It was the three that was pinchy and the four that was expansive. It was the five that was pinchy and the seven, its mate, that's the expansive one. The eight is the pinchy one and the nine is the expansive one, but not so with the sevenths. Okay, with the sevenths, what we have is something different. With the sevenths, what happens is that the minor seventh, which is a 10, is in the overtone series, whereas the 11 is not. Okay, it's the only time it flips. And of course, we already know about this. It's only a half step, the 11, that C up to B that I played for you guys, that's only a half step off of that octave, and so it really is doubly pinchy, all right? So, tell me whether this is an 11. And you can do that same thing. It's a bizarre contradiction or paradox. It's going up at the same time it has this feeling of being really tight and acidic, lemony, versus listen, even if I play it loudly. Really loudly, right. 10, right, 10. Easier, isn't it? Very good, awesome. Which sounds larger, this? Or this. Uh, okay, that's a four that I just played. All right, <laughs> so this is what can really mess with a sensitive ear, is the fact that, darn it, the four sounds bigger than the eight. Okay, it isn't. So the way to get past that, as we'll be talking about, is really no, oh, but it's a third. The upper note's looking down and it's harmonic. But we have to be paying attention to all of its aspects to be able to make that work.